Last week, major companies announced that they were pulling advertisements from Twitter following Elon Musk's endorsement of this viciously anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, where a Twitter user claims that white-hating Jewish people are facilitating the great replacement of whites by flooding countries with immigrants. Now, as you can see, Musk responded saying, you have said the actual truth. Now, this is the same conspiracy theory, for those who don't know, that was echoed by the Tree of Life synagogue shooter. And Elon Musk agrees with him, apparently. Now, on top of that, Elon Musk has unbanned Holocaust-denying Nazis, and he still refuses to remove Nazis like this one, who has a literal transphobic slur in their Twitter handle, along with 1488. And, I mean, all of this has been known for a long time about Elon Musk. To be charitable, his sympathy towards Nazis and white supremacists is kind of an open secret because he, he constantly communicates with them. But, him endorsing that conspiracy theory was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back because it was one of the few instances where there was no room for interpretation. There's no plausible deniability there. You have to take it at face value because he's just saying it. He went mask off. He said the quiet part loud. And as a result, advertisers couldn't justify spending money on Twitter and they left. And now he's in full on damage control mode in a shameless effort to lure back Twitter's advertisers. And one of the first things that he did was censor pro-Palestine speech on Twitter. Now for ADL president, Jonathan Greenblatt, that was all he needed to do because he praised Musk for his quote, leadership in fighting hate just one day after acknowledging that Musk endorsed this despicable anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Oh, and Greenblatt then went on to thank UTA for firing Susan Sarandon after he hailed Musk as a leader. You can't make this shit up, folks. Now, Greenblatt's decision to embrace Musk all because he's censoring certain phrases has actually pissed off some people within the ADL, and I think rightfully so. The Rolling Stone reports, Ellie Pariser, the founder of the progressive website MoveOn.org and a member of the ADL's tech advisory board, tells Rolling Stone he found Greenblatt's decision to applaud Musk for banning the terms both morally wrong and disastrously counterproductive. Censorship of these phrases will not reduce anti-Semitism, Pariser says, especially while Musk himself, one of the the most popular users on the platform continues to engage with and boost it. Pariser tells Rolling Stone that while he has historically supported the ADL's work against anti-Semitism and hate speech, unless the organization changes course, I plan to step down from the tech advisory board. He noted, however, that if the ADL acknowledged it had made a big mistake and course corrected, he would keep his place on the board. Though some ADL advisory board members who spoke with Rolling Stone continue to support Greenblatt, others have raised questions about his leadership, saying that the CEO's hardline stance on defending the Israeli government's actions in Gaza, as well as Greenblatt's history of aligning himself with an individual known for espousing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, are eroding the organization's credibility. And I think that's important. The ADL has done good work in the past, so I want them to succeed, but Greenblatt here is undermining them by going to bat for the actions of the Israeli government, right? And I think that what's happening with the ADL is a microcosm of a bigger thing that we're seeing with Israel's defenders. If support for Israel's government automatically gets all of your accusations of anti-Semitism erased like that, it tells you a lot about the motivations of these folks, doesn't it? It suggests that Israel's defenders are only invoking anti-Semitism to shut down criticism of Israel. And this is a very dangerous game to play because anti-Semitism is very real. And unfortunately, it's on the rise around the world and in the United States. And conflating criticism of Israel's government with bigotry against the Jewish people is deeply dangerous because Israel is a government and we are allowed to criticize governments without having that criticism be conflated with the people of that government. Nobody questions whether or not we're Islamophobic for condemning Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen. Nobody cries racism for condemning corrupt warlords in sub-Saharan Africa, nor should they. But since Israel's genocide in Gaza is indefensible, the go-to tactic is to just shut down criticism altogether with cynical accusations of anti-Semitism. And if you're Jewish and you condemn the actions of the Israeli government, they'll just label you a self-hating Jewish person. We've seen this happen with Naomi Klein, Bernie Sanders, and it's just, it's, it's gross because in other words, it means that any and all criticisms of Israel are illegitimate by default. But if you unconditionally support Israel, their defenders will give you a pass, even if you say the most horrific anti-Semitism imaginable as Elon Musk did. And it's not just Elon Musk. 
Pastor John Hagee was embraced at the March for Israel demonstration despite blaming Jewish people for the Holocaust and claiming that Hitler was sent by God. And now we're seeing the same thing happen where Elon Musk, who blamed Jewish people, not Israel, for white replacement, is all of a sudden embraced by Israel's defenders because he's signaling support for Israel's genocide in Gaza. In fact, he's even being welcomed in Israel. The New York Times reports, Elon Musk traveled to Israel to meet Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday, touring the scene of a Hamas attack in a visit that appeared aimed at calming the outcry over his endorsement of an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on X, the social media platform he owns. On Tuesday, after arriving in Israel, Mr. Musk wrote on X that actions speak louder than words. Wearing a flak jacket, he toured Kafar Aza, an Israeli kibbutz, where dozens of people were killed during the Hamas attack on October 7th. Now, I find this incredibly fucking gross. Does anyone actually believe that Elon Musk has had a change of heart in the week since he blamed Jewish people for white replacement? Of course not. Nobody believes that. Netanyahu doesn't believe that. But Netanyahu is giving cover to this anti-Semite specifically because Musk has the power to control the flow of information on Twitter, and that could be an invaluable asset to Israel's war propaganda effort. And Netanyahu is already facing massive backlash in Israel for a number of reasons. He's facing corruption charges, and 76% of Israelis think he should resign, and protesters even chanted jail now outside of his home earlier this month, largely because they blame him for the security failure that allowed the Hamas attack on 10 7. And once again, he's now being criticized over this publicity stunt with Elon Musk. For example, Haaretz writer Ben Samuels slammed Netanyahu for giving Musk a hero's welcome, writing, Israel's repulsive embrace of Elon Musk is a cynical betrayal of Jews dead and alive. Welcoming such a toxic mogul with open arms and taking him around sites of a massacre that has been belittled, demeaned, and denied on his watch should be a stain on Netanyahu's legacy. And also Esther Solomon, the editor-in-chief of Haaretz, tweeted, blatant anti semitism and publisher of anti-Semitism, Elon Musk, should be persona non grata in Israel. Instead, Netanyahu, plumbing new depths of amoral sycophancy, gives him a PR visit to the kibbutzim devastated by Hamas. Profane, venal, bilious, both of them. And they're right to be pissed off. This man endorsed an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that is so vile it was literally used to justify the slaughter of innocent Jewish people. But now Netanyahu is giving him cover and uh, taking him on a tour because it's politically expedient, because Elon Musk could be a valuable asset to him in his genocide against Gazans. It's just so disgusting, and Elon Musk is really going all in on his embrace of Israel's war propaganda, and I say this because during a Twitter spaces with Netanyahu, Musk seemingly agreed with the dumbest lies that Netanyahu used to manufacture consent for his genocide in Gaza. Case in point. Uh, the one thing you cannot do is give immunity to the terrorists because they're hiding among civilians. Because if you give them immunity, everybody says they shouldn't be doing this. But effectively, nobody's willing to take the action to make sure that this is not an effective tactic. Because if it is, it'll repeat itself yes. again and again and again. By the way, Hamas says we're going to do it again and again. But it's not only against Israel that they'll do it. This will spread very quickly throughout the Middle East and peril the entire region. From there, they'll go to Europe. And from there, they'll also go elsewhere to America, whom they call the great Satan. We're just the little Satan. <laughs> yes. America's the great Satan. America is the great Satan. America is the great Satan. And this is an Iranian <laughs> axis. Yes, America. yes, yes. That's it's true. Iran, Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis, and Hamas. Yes. It's all part of that same axis that goes against Israel, the United States, uh, free civilization, and the modern Arab states. We're all on one side. They're on the other side. You have We have a first a mission to destroy Hamas. Nothing's going to stop that because if you want peace, destroy Hamas. If you want security, destroy Hamas. If you want a better life for the Palestinians in Gaza who've been hijacked uh, by Hamas, destroy Hamas. Uh, all of that is a precursor to the question that you asked. You first have to get rid of the poisonous regime, uh, as you did in Germany, as you did in Japan yeah. uh, in World War II. These were two... There's no choice. There's no choice. Uh, so uh, that, that's this, a prerequisite. Yes. Listening to that makes it very clear as to why Netanyahu is doing this. 1.2 million people on Twitter heard the Israeli prime minister fearmonger about Hamas coming to America because they're supposedly hell-bent on global domination just like the Nazis. I mean, this is why Netanyahu felt the need to give Elon Musk a pass for his anti-Semitism. That's why because he's useful. But what's especially gross is these self-interested assholes 
are both performing for everyone. And I think it's obvious to see that, but a lot of people won't see through their opportunism. Musk, for example, only cares about money and wants to get advertisers back on Twitter and possibly sell Starlink to Israel as well. And maybe to Gaza if Israel approves, of course, but it's definitely not an occupation. Don't call it that. And when it comes to Netanyahu, he only cares about his imperialist and neoconservative ambitions. But I mean, they're both pretending to care about people when they don't. It's all an act. It's theater. Now, Jewish activist and writer Joshua P. Hill explained in a substack published on October 29th how this game that's being played by Zionists like Netanyahu literally endangers Jewish people around the world. And here's what he says. It is easy to denounce every anti-Semitic attack that has come in the wake of Israel's relentless and genocidal attack on Gaza. I condemn them all. I want my family and my friends to be safe. I want to be safe. And so I also condemn the decades-long Zionist effort to claim my entire religion and claim my entire people. Judaism is a religion, a culture, and in many ways, an ethnicity. Zionism is a political and colonial project. In equating them, the state of Israel and Zionist propagandists tie my people to their violence. They link us to their atrocities in the minds of millions. And for them, that is just one of the acceptable prices worth paying in their efforts to get the world to side with their program of ethnic cleansing, occupation, and apartheid. Now, I do not believe that our safety is really the priority of the Zionist government. They work overtime to to tie my people, our entire religion, to their violent project in the eyes of the world, no matter the harm and backlash this contributes to. They force Zionist Jews everywhere into the arms of the right, into the arms of people who couldn't care less about us. Exactly. People like Elon Musk, for example. Now, I would highly encourage you to read the entire column. I'll link to it down below because he makes a lot of really important points, and I think that his voice is important here in this discussion. But I think this is why it's important to reiterate again that Jewish people are not responsible for the actions of the Israeli government in the same way that Gazans aren't responsible for the actions of Hamas. Again, people are people and governments are governments. So if you say that it's anti-Semitic to criticize Israel's indiscriminate bombing campaign in Gaza, you are necessarily ascribing culpability to Jewish people who have nothing to do with those atrocities. And I think that that conflation and generalization of all Jewish people with Israel is anti-Semitism. It's almost an incitement of hatred and violence against these people who have nothing to do with what the government of Israel is doing. People are not monolithic. Israeli citizens don't even like Netanyahu, and governments often don't have the same interests as their people. So it is absolutely absurd to me to say that if you criticize what Israel is doing, you are anti-Semitic. But defenders of Israel don't care. They'll gladly conflate any and all criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism because it's a tactic that works. That's why they do it. But it's disgusting and a very dangerous game to play, which is why so many Jewish people are speaking out and saying, not in our name. Don't pretend like you're doing this to protect us. You don't speak for us. Now, with that being said, it is important to point out that there are instances where actual anti-Semites will try to cloak their anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism or criticisms of Israel, and we should call that out when we see it. For example, Candace Owens, she's a good example of this, who lately is criticizing Israel, but at the same time, last year she was defending Kanye West when he was going on his pro-Hitler rants. So it's good to acknowledge that there are bad faith people who are using this as an opportunity to gin up anti-Semitism, and they're trying to do that under the pretense of criticizing Israel. And it's also important to point out that non-Jewish people should never ever dismiss the seriousness or reality of anti-Semitism just because it's disingenuously weaponized by Israel's defenders. Because anti-Semitism, again, is very real, and I think we all have a responsibility to combat it whenever we see it. And one way to combat it is to not let anti-Semites like Elon Musk get a pass after endorsing one of the most despicable anti-Semitic conspiracy theories in existence. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo